Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today we're going to have a look at the new Unify Site Magic that includes our traditional mesh, site to site VPN, as well as the hub and spoke. For mesh, we could have up to 20 sites directly connected to each other, and this is good if you have shared resources between the sites. If you have a central server or a NAS and have over 20 sites, you would want to go with the hub and spoke as this allows up to 1,000 different sites connected. Before we get into the configuration, there are a few requirements that we need to meet to be able to use the mesh or the hub and spoke. Each site you need to be the owner of that you want connected together. You need to have at least one public IP between all of the sites, and you must be running Unify Network 9.0.108 or higher and Unify OS 4.1.3 or newer. Below in the text, you're gonna see the cloud gateways or independent gateways that could work with the mesh and hub and spoke. Now let's start with the mesh network and get it configured. This is the main dashboard where we're gonna be doing our configuration for our mesh and our hub and spoke. You're gonna to have to go over to unify.ui.com and then on the left-hand side, you'll see the site magic SD-WAN. I've clicked on the mesh network. And what we're going to do, we're going to hit get started. The first thing we need to do is give this a name and I'm just going to call this Mac Telecom Mesh. And then we could see all of our different sites. We could select between two and up to 20. So I'm going to scroll down. A lot of this is going to be blurred out for obvious reasons, but we are going to connect three different sites together. The three sites that we're going to be connecting together is this Mac Telecom Ajax, Mac Telecom Test, and then ultra spoke network, which is sitting right beside me on a different IP. So if you see the Mac telecom test, this is my UDM pro sitting in my rack in the basement. We're going to check off all three sites that we want to be able to talk to one another. As you can see, two of these sites have public IP, so we're good to go. We already meet that requirement. And then the last one doesn't have a public IP. And all we need to do is press add. And the networks that we're going to want to connect together are the work for the top one. So 10.138.4.0 and then the default on Mac Telecom test. And then on the ultra spoke network, it will also be the default. But before we go and do that, we want to try to hit some of these just to show you that it's not working. So we're going to try to ping my NAS that's sitting on 192.168.10.133. So I'll ping that 192.168.10.133. And you can see that it's not going through. I am sitting on the ultra spoke network. We also do have a printer that we're going to want to share resources to at the Mac Telecom Ajax. And we'll try to ping that. So 10.138.4.178. And you can see that that's also not going through. So let's get this site to site VPN connected. We're going to select the work. We're going to select default on Mac telecom test and the same for the spoke. And then we're going to click on connect. We now see all sites are connected by this little green icon that's going off. So if we bring the command line back up and I hit the up arrow, we should now be able to hit this printer and we absolutely can. If we try to hit the NAS that's sitting on my main site, we're able to hit that as well. So we're gonna be able to share resources between all of these sites back and forth. With the three sites now connected, you may not want these sites to be able to reach all of your resources. Maybe we just want them to go over to my UNAS and that's it at 192.168.10.133. But if we bring open a command prompt, I'm gonna hit up and then press enter. We're able to hit another unified device within this network. So we need to create some firewall rules to prevent this. So if I go over to my Mac telecom test, we're gonna click on security and then we're gonna to go to firewall. I am using the new zone based firewalling and I will be from now on in my videos. So if you haven't switched over, I will leave a link to my zone based firewall video down below. But scrolling down here, we could see that within our VPN, there's a WireGuard server, which I set up before. And then we could see this Mac telecom Ajax and ultra spoke network. This was automatically added when we created the mesh through the site magic. We first need to create a blocking rule or a blocking policy. So we'll click on create policy and I'll give it a name. Block VPN to internal networks. The source is gonna be our VPN, that's the source zone, the action will to be to block, and then we have our destination zone of internal. If you don't wanna do all the networks within your internal, you would click on networks and then select which one you want to block out but we're just gonna leave it at any, and then we're gonna add the policy. Now bringing up the command prompt again, if I hit the up arrow, we should be blocked from hitting this unified device. And you could see that that is now not going through, but we want to be able to get to my UNAS. So we need to create an allow policy. So we'll create another policy. 
Scrolling up this time, it will say allow VPN to UNAS. The source is going to be our VPN. The destination will be internal, but this time it's going to be an IP address. The IP that I'm going to give to it is 192.168.10.133. We're going to click on add and then we're going to add that policy. Same with the older way of doing our firewall rules. We have this allow VPN to UNAS. It's under the blocking rule, so it still wouldn't work. And we'll test that out right here. So I'll go ahead and I'll ping 192.168.10.133. And we're still not able to hit it. I'm going to hit control C and then do dash T. So it's a consistent ping. We're going to go back to our firewall rules and we're going to click on reorder. From reorder, we're going to put this allow VPN to UNAS above the block rule. And then we're going to hit done. Going back to the command prompt, we should see this going through very shortly. And we don't see it going through yet. And why don't we? Because I put the action to be on block. We want that to be on allow and then we need to apply the changes. And this should now start working in a few seconds. As you can see, it's now working. We could get to the UNAS, but we can't get to anywhere else within the subnet. And this is very easy to create those mesh networks with the site magic. Now let's move on to hub and spoke. Now back over on unify.ui.com and we clicked on site magic SD WAN, we could see the hub and spoke. It will look a little bit different than the mesh. So we'll click on get started. It's giving us a name of SD WAN name, hub and spoke one, and I'll leave it at that. And we have a couple other things that we could look at. So we have our hub topology. We have single, failover, or custom. Going over to see what these things do, if we click on the eye icon, it says all spokes connect to one hub. For failover, it will say all spokes connect to one active hub with failover hubs. And then we have our custom. I'm just going to leave it at one hub for this situation. We also have our VPN tunnels. We have failover, redundant, or highly redundant. For failover, a single tunnel between the spoke hubs, primary WAN, failover causes a brief interruption while a new tunnel is established. For our redundant, each spoke's primary and secondary WAN connects to the hub's primary and secondary respectively, and then we have the highly redundant. This independent tunnels between each spoke WAN and hub WAN for maximum redundancy. We're just gonna leave it on failover. It's just a simple setup that we're gonna be doing. Next thing we need to do is select the hub that we're gonna be using. I'll be using my Mac Telecom test. That is where my UNAS sits and where I want the spokes to be able to talk to. We need to select our spokes or our remote site. So we'll click on select and I'm gonna select Mac Telecom Ajax. And we're also gonna do this ultra spoke network and we're gonna press save. This is the network that this computer is currently living on. After we add the spokes in, there is other things that gets popped up. We see the hub networks and the WANs. For the networks we want the spokes to be able to talk to, we need to specify that here. So I'll select network. And then we'll click on networks in the right hand corner. And we're only going to want to talk to the default network as that UNAS is on 192.168.10.133. Now under this, we also have routes. And what this would be used for is to add a non-local network like a site-to-site -site VPN if you needed that to go across. There's a couple things that we could do with our spokes. You could see enable subnet overlap with SNAT. I'm not going to be doing that because our networks aren't overlapping for what I need to talk to each other. But if you do have overlapping networks, you'd want to have that enabled. We also have isolate spokes. So the spokes wouldn't be able to see each other. We're first going to test with this off and then we'll turn it back on to see if the spokes are actually blocked from seeing one another. On our spokes, we need to select the networks that we want to be able to communicate over to the hubs or between the spokes themselves. So I'm going to click on the Mac Telecom Ajax. We're going to select. And this time we're just going to select that work network. And that's because I want to share resources with the printer that they have there. For the ultra spoke network, we're just going to have the default because that's all that is there. And then we're going to press save. Once we add the networks, all we need to do is press create. The hub and spoke VPNs are now connected together. And since we deselect isolate spoke networks, we should be able to hit that printer. I'll bring up a command prompt and we're going to press enter. And you could see that that's going through. Now I'm going to go back into the configuration and we're going to click on isolate spokes. And once I press apply changes after the configuration writes, we should be able to see that this is no longer going through. The configuration has now written and you could see the requests were timed out. But if I try to ping my NAS, we're still able to get there because the spokes are able to connect to the hub. You can write other firewall rules within your hub network 
to be able to block out different traffic or from getting to other devices. And that's gonna be my video on the SiteMagic Hub and Spoke and the Mesh Network. And it makes it really, really easy to connect multiple sites together up to 1000 sites with the hub and spoke. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.